And so my idea is based on the knowledge that I have from work really starting many years ago in the 1960s and 70s that most people in cancer are not aware of because mo most people in cancer view it as a disease of the gene or the, you know, where basically gene mutation leading to uncontrolled cell growth. I have always viewed cancer as a disease of sort of the hierarchy of what makes us us. It's a disease of development. It's the disease of a cell going to a tissue, going to an organ, going to the whole organism. And you don't, a cancer, you could have a uncontrolled cell growth that's benign. A tumor is a, a mass or a swelling. It could have a wart. It's uncontrolled cell growth. It's not a cancer. A cancer is when you have a breakdown of tissue boundaries, invasion, metastasis. And so it's really the, the breakdown of how we normally form tissues and maintain them through, through, through life. Now, people in the 70s took uh, actually breast cancer tissue. And the breast cancer is a disease of the breast epithelial cells, which are the glandular cells that produce milk normally. And our tissues that are epithelial tissues, the skin is another example, sit on a connective tissue that's, that's called stroma or mesenchyme. Um, and this is the dermis of the skin, for example. But breast has these connective tissue cells around it. And in the embryo, the connective tissue actually governs the shape of the tissue. If you take, take the connective tissue of a salivary gland and you mix it with the glandular epithelium from the breast, you actually get what looks like a salivary gland, but it secretes milk, mammary milk, into the lining of the duct. And so the, the connective tissue dictates the pattern of the tissue. Uh, in cancer now, we're trying to figure out what is it about a specific type of epithelial, in this case breast, uh, a specific type of embryonic tissue, in this case breast, that can both direct the normal embryo to form the breast and even reboot a cancer to revert back into normal breast tissue. What they're secreting, what, how much tensional forces they create, the shape of their extracellular matrix, whether it's a line this way or a line this way, the composition of it, when it turns on certain genes, um, there's work to suggest that whether it forms certain electrical junctions between cells. So there's many factors. It's not just what it produces. And we're going to try to engineer materials that have all of those, that correct combination of factors. Near term, probably the first thing would be when you remove a primary tumor, you would put this in the wound site so that anything that potentially remains would not grow and metastasize. But the long term goal would be really to be able to inject this so that it has targeting sequences that go to any breast tumor. And then it would self-assemble into this structure at those sites. It could also be given in pre-malignant conditions where right now they go in and they, 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 form, they see a, a, a lump and they, you know, they're going to take it out to make sure that it's not malignant yet. And the odds are when they find that it, that it is pre-malignant, um, that the odds are that they, they can take all of it out, but they may miss some parts. So you might implant these materials not to allow it to go any further, but actually to go backwards and become normal. So it, the idea would be to both have implantables, but the long term would be injectables, so it can go anywhere.